Welcome back guys to another Cyberpunk video with update 2.0 and especially with Phantom Liberty. Cyberpunk has almost doubled the number of weapons and especially the number of iconic weapons. And even the existing weapons and their traits have so dramatically changed that any previous order of best weapons is no longer valid. So I tested all the new weapons and compared them with the existing ones based on my experience of playing this game over 1500 hours on the highest difficulty. I try to be as objective as possible but of course weapon rankings are sometimes just also a matter of personal preference and playstyle. Of course almost every weapon looks good and can be used on a lower difficulty, but the weapons on this list are so much better than the rest that they can be even used on the highest difficulty to beat the entire game. One of my favorite weapon categories especially after update 2.0 are the shotguns and the third best shotgun in the game is still the Batsing Shong. The Batsing Shong got over 1000 damage in update 2.0 to make sure it is still as fun to use and as good as it always was. It simply disintegrates and dismembers every enemy you come across and it's still completely valid and extremely fun to use even on the highest difficulty. However the long reload time is a real nightmare and the weapon is not accessible before you have played at least one of the endings. A better option would be to use the new deserter shotgun from the Phantom Liberty DLC. This weapon is a double barrel shotgun that shoots explosive rounds which simply burns everything including yourself. Reloading after every shot will also trigger the electro generator which adds an additional electro damage for every shot you make with it. But when you use this weapon at close range you will always burn yourself. And that is why the Sovereign is in my opinion the better choice. The Sovereign is also a double barrel shotgun that can use the electro generator to double its damage for every shot and it also has 100% crit chance for every shot on close range. And most importantly it doesn't burn yourself when you use it. It is also a base game weapon and accessible early on so you can use this weapon to get 100% crit chance in your early levels and have a blast playing this game. The third best sniper rifle in the game is now the Overwatch. The Overwatch is still extremely good and thanks to its fixed silencer it also now does a really good job on playing silently and in stealthy missions. It also has a really good handling and reload time and is overall an extremely good balanced base game weapon. But the Rosetsu which comes on second place will simply deal way more damage than the Overwatch. The Rosetsu is a new tech sniper rifle which benefits mainly from the new bolt mechanics which can completely bypass every armor and one shot everything including even some bosses. Of course if you don't have the DLC you can also simply put the breakthrough on this position in your list. The Rosetsu is basically an improved version of the breakthrough, it doesn't really do anything much better other than having more damage. But the clear downside of tech sniper rifles is of course the long charge time to get the most damage out of them. But one weapon that doesn't even have to be charged to deal electro bolts is the Sparky. The Sparky has a special trait that will deal electro damage to all surrounding enemies whenever you hit a target. And it doesn't need any charge time to do that, it has a superior handling, a faster reload and it is the overall new best sniper sniper rifle in the game. Especially when you are planning to use your sniper rifle together with Sandevistan to stop your enemies from moving and to get better shots at them, then any charge time is definitely no option. Finding the best assault rifles after patch 2.0 was actually not an easy task. Especially assault rifles and SMGs were so heavily nerfed that they are almost beyond usefulness on very hard difficulty. But the new Carmen assault rifle from the Phantom Liberty DLC is still able to do this job. The good fire rate, really good handling and the decent amount of damage sets it apart from most of the other assault rifles. The only downside of the Carmen is that it only has a 40 rounds magazine so you will have to reload this weapon quite often. The Psalm has basically the same damage, same handling and the same reload speeds than the Carmen but it has a 50 rounds magazine and additionally burns your enemies. It is also accessible very early in the base game in north side so you can carry and use this weapon for your entire playthrough. The best assault rifle is the Prejudice. The Prejudice is an iconic version of the Mazamune burst assault rifle and it can now be finally acquired as a reward when you complete the rogue ending. This weapon is now an absolute beast because it has 100% additional critical damage which means it basically has a double damage every time you make a critical hit, it has a guaranteed crit chance on your first hit, has an increased fire rate when you take damage and increased damage on elite enemies. When you equip a decent silencer on this weapon you can even one shot enemies on very hard after patch 2.0 by using an assault rifle, which is truly awesome. 
The SMGs are facing the same problem as the assault rifles of relatively low damage after patch 2.0, but there are some weapons which are really usable. The iconic Erebus SMG is a new weapon that uses black wall energy that you can get from one of the new endings in Phantom Liberty, but if you expected this weapon to be higher on the list, I really have to disappoint you, because the damage of this weapon is extremely awful, especially for very hard difficulty. It acts more like an automatic shotgun and if you try to kill your enemies from mid or long range with it, it barely makes a scratch on them. So it is a well deserved third spot, but nothing more than that. The Rebus might still be very fun to use on lower difficulties up to hard mode, but it is probably a better choice to just craft the Kanto Mark VI operating system. The Fenrir got an insane buff in patch 2.0, because it now also deals electro damage and it has a high shock chance. That means after every 4 or 5 shots, you will simply electrocute your enemies, which extremely speeds up the time to kill for this weapon and it comes closest to having short circuit applied to all your enemies. You will simply electrocute everyone when using this weapon. It is absolutely awesome and really really powerful. However, the best SMG by far right now is the Raiju Tech Gun, because the Raiju Tech Gun not only has an insane fire rate, but it is also extremely precise, has an increased crit chance, it can shoot through walls without charging, and you can even use it while using Thunder Vista, because these shots are so fast that it is the only SMG that can be used together with it. And that makes it extremely useful and extremely versatile and an absolute deadly instrument. The Raiju is the single best automatic gun you can use when you play with Thunder Vista or any other time slowdown. The precision rifles have only one entry that was worth to mention in my list and that is the hypercritical. The hypercritical got an insane damage buff and it now completely melts every enemy in patch 2.0. It should be one of your go to weapons if you want to have a powerful one shot build. This weapon still looks ugly as hell and you won't win any beauty contest with it, but you will definitely win all your battles. Many of the blades also got completely reworked with different traits and abilities. The Zatori no longer has its 500% critical damage so sadly it is not even anymore on this list. However, on the third spot we still have the Yinshimaru. The Yinshimaru is still an awesome blade as it gives you a guaranteed crit on your first hit, it can leap towards your enemies during optical camo and any hit you make during optical camo will also be a guaranteed crit. So this blade is definitely the best pick when you want to make a stealth build. The second best katana and a new entry on this list is the Irata. The Irata is a new katana that was added with update 2.0 that deals additional burning damage to your enemies. It actually has such a high burn chance that it will almost every time burn your enemies on the second or third hit. And while your enemies are burning, you will always deal guaranteed critical hits. However, there's a blade that has a much better bonus, which is the scalpel. The scalpel is the only one of the top three katanas that still has its original trait, by giving you 50% additional critical chance whenever you use Sun Vista. And that buff is actually really huge, because otherwise you have to invest very very expensive cyberware to just achieve the same 50% crit chance. But this blade simply gives it for free, and you can also get this blade while you are still in Watson. So this is an early game item that gives you 50% free critical chance whenever you use Thunder Vista and it will still be the best late game item because it also saves you a ton of capacity later on. Number 5 on the list of the new best handguns even after patch 2.0 is still Skippy. There would be no complete list without having Skippy in a list of best weapons in this game. When you pick up Skippy, you have to make sure that you set him to the pacifist mode, because after 50 kills he will switch to the opposite side, which will be Stone Cold Killer, and from that point on you will only make headshots with this weapon, which makes it extremely great and still a very valid weapon to use. You can also now complete the quest and give it to Regina and she will get it back after 3 days with some modifications on it. The fourth place goes to Comrade's Hammer. Comrade's Hammer is one of the very few explosive weapons that still deserves a spot on this list, because it can also be used together with the Electro Generator and that simply makes it really awesome, because it not only deals explosive damage, but also electro damage at the same time. However, the reload speed is still awful and hasn't very much improved. A really awesome new weapon for stealth gameplay from the Phantom Liberty DLC is Her Majesty. This weapon is mainly designed for stealth gameplay and especially when you use optical camo. So whenever you break stealth or you get detected, the damage of this weapon gets significantly lower. But as long as you're undetected, this weapon will simply one shot everyone. If you are looking for a really good revolver, you should check out the Amnesty. The Amnesty can be won during the Panem ending when you beat Cassidy's shooting challenge. But since the Amnesty, like any other revolver in the game, can no longer equip a silencer, it sometimes simply lacks the damage to kill your enemies in a single shot, especially on very hard. 
the Pride is definitely a weapon that plays in his own league. This weapon gives you over 400% headshot damage on high threat and elite enemies, additional 100% critical damage and a guaranteed critical hit on your first hit whenever you hit a target. That means this weapon will even kill and work without getting any point into the cool tree. The Pride is single handedly the best handgun in the game after patch 2.0 and even after Phantom Liberty by a very long shot. The pride can also be found during the rogue ending, so if you play that ending, you not only get the best handgun, you will also get the best assault rifle in a single playthrough. If you are looking for a good early game handgun, you should check out the Kongu. The Kongu can be found during the Heast mission in Yorinobu's office and it is basically a smaller version of the Pride, but it also deals significantly less damage. But it might be a good solution until you find one of the better ones. I hope you really liked this video, please don't forget to subscribe, leave me a like and see you next time.